Hello, my name is Dean and I'm going to briefly discuss um, HR crisis management before I then hand you over to my team members, Ryan and Leon. The following is a simplified view of uh, human resource strategy formulation. During this presentation, we will briefly cover the analysis, diagnosis and benefits uh, intended from these changes. When we analyze, we need to know what is currently happening. Uh, we need to know whether it's good or bad for the company. What are the issues or problems? And what are the requirements of the business? Um, is it aligned with the strategy of the business? So the diagnosis, it comes down to why do the issues exist? The causes of these issues, what are they? The internal, external factors influencing the situation. It could be competition, environment, uh, the management style, the culture of the company, political. And the last one we're going to discuss are uh, the benefits. Um, it's very important to know where you're trying to go with the plan. Uh, you want measurable goals. Um, Obviously, in this case, we're looking for improved motivation, uh, higher retention rates, increased market share and profits. So the current issues, um, I won't go too much into the slide, um, but clearly there's a lot of serious HR issues. 50% um, turnover is very high. And loss of market share, obviously, you're not going to remain in business for long at that rate. Benchmarking is um, very useful to compare your current practices with the industry best practices. Um, these are all human resource functions, and they're all very critical to the success of the company. Um, so each one of these would be part of the diagnosis um, before you can go into making any uh, plans and decisions. This is a brief look at the internal external factors for SoftTech. Um, SoftTech operates in 15 different countries throughout Australia, Asia, Europe and North America. So. Obviously, there's going to be different cultures involved and, you know, different value systems. You're going to have languages, time zones, which will affect virtual teams. Um, it's a high-tech company, so you're going to have a remote workforce. So people will be isolated, possibly working in silos. It's a very competitive labor market in um, high-tech software. And of course, you've got the laws and politics of different companies. So it's a very complex environment. This is a very interesting graph showing um, it's a survey of 1,000 managers in 100 companies, different companies in the US. And clearly, the top of this list shows communication, leadership, and soft skills are uh, the majority of the cause for managerial failure. So this can't be overstated enough, and it's, it's really critical that all levels of management, middle management, all the way through to executive, have really good communication skills. Um, back to benefits. Um, obviously, a motivated and enthusiastic person is likely to be happier. Uh, if you're happy and you're going to be more productive, better team player, this leads to you know, improved retention. So each thing leads to another. Um, increased productivity. Um, as long as you're making the right product and your design's right, you'll you know increase your market. You become a market leader and increase your profit. And as as mentioned earlier, it's very very important to have KPIs so you can measure these these um, benefits and make sure that your strategy is on track. So thank you for your time. Um, 
I will now hand you over to Ryan, who is going to discuss culture. Thank you, Dean. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan George, and I've been brought in here today to discuss culture improvement initiatives uh, inside of SoftTech. Uh, to do that, firstly, we'll look at uh, how to review and analyse the SoftTech organisational culture, a quick understanding on mutual relationships between culture and how it impacts structure, and suggest look at some suggested culture type and models for, for SoftTech, and finishing with some sustainability strategy suggestions. Um, Firstly, to, obviously we need to review and analyse the current organisational culture at SoftTech. We'd look to use that use Hofstede's uh, multi-focus model on organisational culture. This identifies the actual culture and gap between optimal, um, possible external restrictions limiting organisational culture and, and the conditions of change, i.e. levels of trust, anxiety and change readiness for employees. Um, the multi-focus model is across um, various uh, levels of, of management um, and employee um, within SoftTech, uh, so right from the CEO down to unit group teams um, and to, and work colleagues and and looking at uh, various dimensions across across SoftTech. Um, so a quick um, overview of, of the of the culture and um, a good example there is uh, is dimension three. You know, is this an easy soft tech, easy going, or a strict workplace? Um, and we can define, yeah, you know, what is the actual and and then the optimal. Um, understanding the the relationship between culture and structure. Um, culture creates a frame of reference and perception for and interpretations. Um, and the actions of organisation members. It influences the process that take place within the organisation and also influences leadership style, organisational learning and, and company strategy. So you can see that it, uh, that it does impact on a company's organisational structure. Organisational structure is a particular configuration or, or dimension and you know, directs and shapes the manner in which organisation members will perform their task with the ultimate um, realisation of achieving the organisation's goals. Um, so, you know, the framework on in is, or the behaviour determined by the framework. On one hand, the behaviour um, determined by cultural assumptions and values. On the other, you know, strengthens and weakens the organisational culture. So, you can see there that uh, the implementation of a particular type of organised structure leads to the development of a particular type of organisational culture. Culture legitimises structure. Structure institutionalises culture. Um, soft tech. Um, a, a particular suggested culture type that we'll probably look at is a guided missile culture. Um, soft tech is a you know, project driven um, task, very complex. Employees will need autonomy in their work. So, we're looking at an egalitarian culture type as well to distribute power as evenly as possible. Uh, suggested model type um, is uh, the ad hocracy model. Um, soft tech is you know, relatively small in, in comparative terms. It's uh, operates with complex and sophisticated technology, needs to be flexible, creative, entrepreneurial and, and innovative, solve problems you know, ad hoc or on a project by project basis, consists of you know, people working in teams uh, with, with variable membership so it's best to decentralise an, an organisational structure um, to give you know, authority and autonomy to carry out tasks. Um, so you can see there the, the the, the actions and frameworks and the, and the distribution of power. Um, just some sustainability strategies, um, ideas for the incoming um, nominated candidate that Leanne will discuss. Um, some of the drivers of a sustainability model could include external, internal context, organisational structure and culture, business context and human and financial resources. Just briefly touching on business context, um, you know, is soft tech operating in sustainable industry sectors, i.e. renewable energy? Um, do customers at soft tech engage in similar environmental or social beliefs? Are products or software that software develop that don't align with cultural beliefs? So, you know, they should they should stop or, or, or exit those industries. Um, and we would the in incoming candidate would need to look at you know, creating a meaningful place to work, you know, develop employee skills and knowledge to increase you know, positive signs or influence or change the context of their work to increase meaningfulness. And also some job uh, initiate job crafting um, 
ideas. And, you know, some managers do tend to think that a one size fits all and don't customise uh, uh, particular job roles to meet particular employee needs. It, it, job crafting can really help to uh, um, illuminate um, reactions and, and you know, drive more optimal functioning and, and positivity and meaning in, in, in employees' work. I'll now hand over to Leon here to identify our ideal candidate. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Leon Wang. In this presentation so far, my colleague Dean and Ryan has discussed about the challenge SoftTech is facing and the proposed change and measures for improvement. Building on that, I'm going to discuss about choosing the right HR director for implement those changes. We will begin with looking at the recruitment and selection process, then move on to role description, key skill and the experience we are looking in a candidate, and the actual candidate we are proposing. At last, we will talk about remuneration plan. In Armstrong's Handbook of Human Resource Management Practice, a 10-step recruitment and selection process is defined. The first and the most important step is defining the requirements. Let's look at the role description of the required candidate. According to Susan Hasfield, the HR director guides and manages the overall provision of human resources services, policies, and the programs for the entire company. The major tasks are listed in this slide. Coming back to this specific case for soft tech, according to the analysis done in case 1 and 2, the key task for the new HR director should be to develop HRM strategy fit the company's goal, to implement the performance management system, to achieve culture change and improvement, and to improve the working environment and the company employee relationship. In order for the uh, HR director to get the support he needed, he should be an uh, executive member of the uh, management team and reporting to the CEO. Based on the role and the task discussed above, we can then derive the key competence we are looking in the uh, HR director candidate would be the following. Experience with strategic HRM, company culture development, design and implement performance management system, employer branding, and talent retention and succession planning. So we are going to look for the candidate using the competence-based approach. After extensive searching, we believe we have found the right candidate. Her name is Kelly Egan. Kelly is currently working as the HR director at a software company called Atlassian, located in Sydney. From her profile summary, we can see that she possesses several expertise that we are looking for, including performance management, employee engagement, change management, culture change and transformation, and so on. Also, Kelly has long working experience as HR professional. She spent her recent years at the software company Atlassian. This experience will help her to adapt in her new role at SoftTech. We can also see that uh, Atlassian has won several awards for being an attractive employer. And uh, according to the reference check we have had, Kelly has been given high credit for this achievement. From her LinkedIn profile, we can see that her skill and competence are highly endorsed by her colleague and partners at work. Among those skills, we can highlight the most relevant to the current case as following performance management, change management, strategy, culture change, employee branding, and so on. So, what makes Kelly Egan the right candidate? We have mentioned this as we go along her profile, but we can summarize it in this slide. She has the experience and skill that we are looking for. She has a proven track record in making a company an attractive employer. This is what we hope she will also achieve at SoftTech. There's no relocation needed since she is located in Sydney as well. And SoftTech and Atlassian are not competitors, so there is no concern for any ethical issue. How do we get Kelly on board? 
We suggest to offer attractive salary, stock reward plan, and、uh, employee benefit according to the company policy. But the most important is that a significant part of the remuneration should be based on performance and results. So we suggest to use to offer bonus related to KPI such as ranking on the attractive employee list, employee satisfaction, etc. This summarizes our presentation. If you have any questions, Dean, Ryan, and myself would be happy to answer. Thank you.